Hello everyone. One day a man said to his friend, I have got something to tell you. I have never told this to anyone. Even now it is extremely difficult and painful for me to tell you. Encouraged by his friend, he said, My wife and I have had a fight almost every day for the past 30 years of our marriage. The friend was taken aback. He didn't know what to say. He thought that they were the best married and happiest couple he had ever known. After a brief pause, the friend said, Every day? The man said, Yes, just about every day. The friend asked, Did you fight today before you came to see me? Yes, the man said. Well, how did it end up? The friend asked. Oh, the man said. She came crawling to me on her hands and knees. My goodness, what did she say? His friend asked. The man said, Oh, she said, Come out from under that bed, you coward, and fight like a man. The Sadducees often disrupted Jesus' preaching and vigorously argued with him on many things. Jesus did not run away or hide from them. Every time he patiently and kindly clarified their doubts by quoting the scriptures. But they always returned to test and trap him. The exchange between Jesus and some Sadducees of which we read in today's Gospel is perhaps the most important. Their question pertains to a fundamental doctrine of Christian faith, the resurrection of body. They seem to suggest that Jesus has been clever in answering their question so far, but this time he would fail. Who were the Sadducees? At the time of Jesus, the Sadducees were one of the three main Jewish political and religious sects. They were aristocrats and priests. They were members of the ruling council called the Sanhedrin. They saw themselves as conservatives. They accepted only the written law of Moses, the first five books of the Old Testament, as authoritative. They rejected many of the beliefs held by the Pharisees and by Jesus, including the resurrection from the dead. Today's Gospel describes the Sadducees as those who deny that there is a resurrection. They thought believing in the resurrection is superstitious. They also did not believe in the existence of a spiritual world where angels and evil spirits abide. They denied God's involvement in everyday life. They denied there is any punishment or reward after this earthly life. However, their beliefs contradicted the scriptures. Though the Pharisees were rivals of the Sadducees, they were in constant conflict with Jesus. In today's text, the Sadducees are asking Jesus for his views on a woman who had been married to seven men, each after the death of another. The question to Jesus is, after their death, at the resurrection, whose wife she would be? Jesus answered them in two ways. 1. Jesus undermines their understanding of the resurrection as too simplistic for they are worried about marriage which is a worldly concern. 2. Jesus explains the belief in, in resurrection with evidence from the written law. He answers them by quoting the book of Exodus chapter 3 verse 6. 
When God manifests his presence to Moses in the burning bush, God tells him that he is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. It means his ancestors who, who died hundreds of years ago were still alive in God. And this God is a living God of a living people and not of the dead. God was the friend of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob when they lived. That friendship does not cease with death. So what does Jesus' conversation with the Sadducees have to tell us today? It is difficult for us to understand our belief in the resurrection. I don't think any of us can fully grasp or explain it to others. We can only imagine what it will be like. Some people imagine that there will be no more sickness, suffering or pain, but only hope, peace and joy. The only way to approach the resurrection is with a genuine faith, both in the scriptures and tradition. Let us not waste our time arguing with others on any of our doctrines. If we can quote scriptural passages to support and defend any of our beliefs, then it is great. If we lack scriptural knowledge, then we can use the means of tradition. Tradition, I mean, not just the use of certain things for worship, such as candles, holy water, vestments, scapular, etc., but beliefs and hopes which have been traditionally handed down to us from one generation to the other. Jesus replied to the Sadducees affirm that there is a resurrection where the new life will be much different from what we think it will be. He says that we will be transfigured, that everything, our life and our relationships will be changed. We will just be the children of God. We will be angels. While on earth people may see us more as devils than as angels, but God sees us angels. We shall never be separated from God again after death. Just as Jesus rose with a resurrected body, we too will have a resurrected body. We will be alive in God. We will recognize each other like the disciples recognized Jesus after his resurrection. The Gospels narrate that Jesus rose physically from the dead. His tomb was empty. He died with his disciples. He had a body of flesh and bones. People recognized him, touched him and talked to him. So also we will recognize people after our resurrection but our relationship will be different. Who will be resurrected from the dead? Will all people be resurrected or just the believers? St. Paul believes that every person born on earth will be resurrected because Jesus Christ overcame death for all. However, not all people will be resurrected to the same glory nor all will be resurrected at the same time. Because he says that the righteous will be resurrected before the wicked and will come forth in the first resurrection. And the unrepentant sinners will come forth in the last resurrection. That's why we are called upon to pray for souls. We pray that God may forgive them and welcome them into the eternal home. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 35 to 40, we read that two brother disciples, James and John, approached Jesus and asked him to do them a favor, to allow them to sit one at his left 
and the other on his right. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I shall drink, or be baptized with the baptism with which I shall be baptized? In other words, Jesus asked them, Can you suffer like me? And can you be obedient or faithful to God? They said, We can. Jesus said to them, The cup that I shall drink, you shall drink. And with the baptism with which I shall be baptized, you shall be baptized. But as for sitting on my right hand or my left, these are not mine to give. They belong to those to whom they have been allotted. In other words, friends, we are reminded that we can hope for greater things to come. But we must work for it. We must fulfill the requirements for resurrection. Since we are assured of resurrection, we must live differently. If Jesus returns and catches us living in a worldly manner, then we may well be overlooked. Jesus in his several parables strongly tells us that many believers will miss out. Jesus says, we must be ready because he is coming when we least expect him. We need to stand up for righteousness and holiness and shun all worldliness. Let us live for God. Let us respond to God with our entire being. Amen.